Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Thursday the 21st of October comes to you from London. And uh, just a quick look at gas prices. We're seeing a little bit of recovery here. This is Dutch gas. We'll come back and look at the whole energy mix at the end. Uh, but we'll start by looking at what's going on in uh, major markets around the world. We're seeing quite a lot of red on the screen at the moment. And there's one story driving that this morning. And that's Evergrande. Their deal collapsing. Shares down some 12% in Hong Kong. Uh, of course, Evergrande shares were a sell about a year ago when we crossed below the cloud. Uh, bad news happens in downtrends. Get used to it. Uh, and of course, if you hit the T key, the interesting thing is we had all these targets to the downside uh, and we've still got a further target to uh, some 87% lower here. Uh, and if we play with the box sizes, we see that those targets are 80, 82 uh, percent. Notice how this target was given way back in October to 2.4. That's kind of where we went. That was given at 14. You cannot ignore these downside targets. The targets on the charts uh, just tell us where we're likely to go. And another case in point is Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin making a new uh, all-time high yesterday. We've been pointing to this target of 83,000 for some time. We're now at 65. And in fact, if you open uh, the Bitcoin chart and just hit the T key again, you see that this target of 66 was given back at 42 back in August. Uh, so again, you cannot ignore the targets. Just press the T key on any chart in your system and you'll get that instant gratification. So we start by looking at the long term, medium term and short term view of the markets. And we start by looking at the dollar. Dollar actually teetering off the bottom here this morning. We've got good upside targets on the short term chart and the medium term trend is still up. And so that's quite key. We are holding 114 against the Japanese yen. And this is normally a lead indicator that the dollar is going to go higher. Dollar uh, sterling against the euro breaking to that 18 month high this week, still holding that level. So looking strong against the euro with a potential 3% upside. So we will see it uh, looks like sterling strength there. Uh, taking a look at the S&P 500 index, we were up yesterday. But of course, with that Evergrande story, sentiment across stock markets is uh, reduced. And we are seeing the futures uh, down 0.2% this morning on the S&P. And the VIX volatility just kicking up a little bit as a result of that. So the fear index is back. Uh, the DAX in Germany is down slightly. The CAC Courant is also down slightly. Asia was more heavily hit. Uh, the Hang Seng down 1.3%. Uh, and the uh, sorry, the, the Japanese market down 1.3 percent, the Hang Seng down two thirds of a percent. Of course, Evergrande shares weighing there, and China actually just holding on, uh, taking it in its stride. But of course, this so story will unfold, and it has markets a little bit more fearful. Uh, the Sensex down 0.7 percent, but still looking spectacular on the long and short uh, medium term charts. And the Aussie market was flat, little change there. As I say, we'll look at the energy mix in a minute. Inflationary fears, of course, across the globe now starting to worry. We're seeing a lot of the base metals uh, jumping. Uh, we've had big moves from uh, tin, copper and zinc this week. And looking at the wheat chart, looking set for a breakout here, uh, this uh, basing pattern. Uh, and so it looks like wheat will go higher and we've got targets some 25% higher, one as much as 60% higher. Uh, multiple targets there just tells us that we probably will start seeing soft commodities following suit. Uh, gold is up this morning very slightly sitting at 1782 but it has been very much in the doldrums. Uh, most other precious metals just struggling. Uh, the dollar strength of recent times has just affected that a little bit, but we can't. We're still, still very much in this sideways trend. If we break $30 on silver, that would be a very different story. Copper had a big move this uh, last week, and we're seeing it sitting and holding these gains, so looking very strong there. US 10 year yield sitting at 1.65%, so um, that's uh, holding those gains. Uh, and inflationary fears uh, returning. We saw Canada uh, reporting higher inflation numbers uh, last night. So that's where we are seeing those fears coming to roost in the bond markets. Taking a look at the energy mix now, we've got Brent crude, first of all. Uh, and we see here that we are just hitting some resistance at $86. That was the level that we were at uh, at the start of the week, uh, just falling away there, but still looking pretty strong. Uh, WTI also just uh, hitting some resistance here as well. Uh, and if we look at US Nat gas 
holding the five dollar mark but uh, really has been in the doldrums probably off the bottom now and looking set for a little bit of recovery storage numbers out today and we do have targets pointing higher so that will be interesting to see uh, whether we go there coal sitting at 138 relatively flat struggled to recover and continue so just rolling over again and we've got these downside targets uh, some 10 and 20 percent lower 15 percent lower so we are seeing coal targets pointing to lower prices emissions had a strong day yesterday uh, and that has given us an upside target of 62 but we need to move above 58 10 to activate that so for the moment uh, we are still seeing that uh, but potential bearishness uh, in emissions in the emissions price bouncing on cloud support so that's a good sign but we do need to be just wary that on the daily we could uh, if we see a lower low, that won't be great. And we have seen a general downtrend in on the 60 minute chart. Taking a look at gas now, uh, UK gas is down 6% this morning. That's activating a downside target to 188. That's downside potential. That it would actually be bad news. We would see a new low at that level. So we need to be aware of that. Uh, and so for the moment, all eyes on whether we're going to break those lows. And in fact, if we look at TTF, uh, it's very much that picture in place as well. We don't have such a clear downside target here, but if we look at the TTF chart, this is really what it's all about. And if we um, just zoom out here, this was the spike, fallen back. Now we're damp. This is a sort of damped reaction after that move. Uh, we've got recent highs of 82 and 107.77. Those are the levels. Uh, and we are seeing this basing here but the key thing is if we break through that uh, level at around 80 euros so that's that's key we need to break above 104 for a breakout to the upside so it's all about watching this play out at the moment so if you're trading gas watch that but of course keep an eye on the one minute targets on your otc data we will see another new target come in when this column locks it already has on mbp you can see that's taking us back uh, to that so low, low 80s level so on your OTC data, keep an eye on those one minute targets. Uh, German power is down 2.4% this morning. We have got downside targets here. We've got an upside target and a downside target. Uh, so no real clues as to which way we're going to break at the moment. Again, it's a picture of uh, watching those higher highs and higher lows. Uh, and you can just put those on your chart with the key levels. Uh, so if we do that on German power, um, we see that uh, we've got these key this range that we've got to just watch there so uh, that's quite key uh, Nordic power is still a little bit in the doldrums has been bearish uh, on the short-term chart for a little while didn't of course benefit from uh, the moves that we saw in uh, Europe other European power markets but for the moment Nordic power seems to have found a bottom and so looking a little bit better than it has that's it for today until tomorrow happy charting see you then